Hi everyone, um, and thanks uh, for watching my first YouTube video. This is my hiker intro and gear review. Uh, my tr trail name is Pritch. I live in New England, and, and in particular split my time between Cape Cod and the White Mountains of New Hampshire, of which of course the AT traverses. I've spent my career in technology, uh, first as a software developer and over time in sales and sales leadership roles. I'm a pretty active guy. I'm a, I'm a runner, a hiker. I've hiked all of the 4,000-footers in New Hampshire, you know, most cases several times over. I hike year-round, usually once a week. Um, I've, most of my hikes are day hikes. Uh, my, I've done a lot of overnight hikes, but frankly, nothing more than five days, so that's going to be an interesting thing, I've, uh, given the length of the AT. I'm also a runner, biker, kayaker. I've run many marathons. And I hike, um, I hike with my son Andy, who's now a college student and a marine reservist, and sometimes with my wife Anna, and often with my dogs Cammy and Noosh, who are sitting at my feet right now, and they might show up when I do my gear review. AT's been on my bucket list for decades. I'm 57, and I don't want to wait any longer. Uh, so as uh, I think Dixie and Homemade Wanderlust say, someday is... Uh, today and so um i'll be leaving very soon i you know I've, I've been watching like many of many of us many of you youtube uh at vloggers for years thinking i'm looking at my list here marley uh steve uh steve walker early riser and of course this year scoutmaster all of who have been uh, for me very educational and inspirational and i've got no experience vlogging but i'm going to give it a go and uh, and this is the beginning of it. My start, my hike starts uh, just three days from today, on Sunday, uh, February 25th. I'm, I'm going to have a pretty interesting day. I'm flying from Boston into Atlanta and getting a ride from um, from one of the uh, tour guides up to uh, near Springer Mountain on the uh, on the dirt road. And I'm probably not going to get there until about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So my goal is to hike to Springer Mountain and then 2.8 miles back the other way to the Stover Creek Shelter. So I may have one of the shortest uh, first day hiking um, mileage of, of most hikers. So, But there you go. So uh, let me now proceed and, and give a quick highlight to the gear that I'm bringing. Pick up on the um, gear review. So first off, I have a Grinnick Gear Crown uh, Crown 2 60-liter pack. I'll be hiking with the Brain initially, and um, I think that over time I might send the Brain home. Uh, of course, I've got a pack cover, a uh, Sil Nylon pack cover. And in terms of a tent, I have the Hornet Nemo, um, Hornet, or Nemo Hornet 2P uh, tent. Super lightweight, uh, sill nylon tent. I've made some modifications to it that I'm hopefully I'll have some opportunities to highlight on the trail. And um, moving along, you can see I have a quilt from, of course, Enlightened Equipment. It's a 20 degree down bag. If if you haven't checked out the site MassDrop.com, uh, it's worth a check out if you're a hiker. There's not always great deals, but there often are. This 20 degree quilt. Uh, I probably say fifty dollars on it, purchasing it from Mass Drop. I'll be carrying that in a Z-Pax um, stuff sack, and in addition to the quilt, I have a Thermarest pad, and I have the Xtherm pad. I think that is um, has much higher R value and is thicker material, and it doesn't have it doesn't weigh that much more. So I think, in particular, starting in February, it's a good bet. And I have an Xped. Um, Air pillow. I've had this probably for 10 years and works well, pretty light. Um, for my sleeping bag, I have a liner. It is a Sea to Summit, um, I think it's called Reactor. Yeah, Thermalite Reactor um, liner. And um, I know most people have the um, lighter weight liner. This one is designed to add 10 degrees to the bag, and I think. Um, That'll be useful in particular when I'm starting out. But I don't really have a lot of experience, maybe five nights in it. It's been pretty comfortable. I should mention I have 
the uh, footprint. I know a lot of people use Tyvek. I'm a believer in footprints. I think they just last longer. Yeah, they weigh more, but uh, I think it, it all makes sense. Uh, moving aside here uh, to some of the other bigger items, I have the Merrill Moab uh, ventilator shoes. I know it's kind of apropos to use trail runners, but I've had torn ligaments in my past and my feet are very sensitive. And so I'm going to start with these and I think perhaps uh, after a couple hundred miles I'll consider switching to trail runners. I do use orthotics. Um, I love Power Step. I, I haven't heard hikers referencing this. This is a Power Step Pinnacle. It's designed for people with flat feet. This particular liner is a couple of years old. These things last forever. This little pad here is put in there by my podiatrist, foot doctor, because I had Morton's Neuroma from all the running that I've done. Uh, put that back. I have um, perhaps larger gaiters than many people will start with, but I'm, I'll probably switch these out once I get into spring. But uh, these are mountain hardware gaiters. I've used these extensively both in um, the shoulder seasons and really are adept at keeping snow um, out of your shoe. They're a little bit longer than most gaiters. Black Diamond Poles. Had these guys for 10 years. I've hiked all 48, 4,000 footers with them. Uh, they're, they're getting old, but if frankly, if they wear out, I'll just get another pair on the trail. And of course, I have the steady, the, the standard Thermarest butt pad. That's pretty darn useful. And my Crocs, uh, which I'll be carrying as well. So let me uh, move over here, see if I can get past. Oh, there's my dogs. There's Cammy. She's a Samoyed. She's uh, eight years old. I love her to death. Hey, baby. Hi, Cammy. Uh, and there's Noosh. He's my six-year-old uh, rescue Samoyed. He's, uh, yeah, he's got some challenges, but he's so much love in that boy. And he's, both of them are my hiking partners. But over here to my clothes. I'm not going to go into super detail here, but... At the top, you can see my, I've got a Patagonia rain jacket, an enlightened equipment kilt. This baby right here, super lightweight, love this thing. And um, I also use this, uh, as I might be able to show on the, on the trail, uh, with my tent as well. Have a poncho, uh, Sea to Summit Sil Nylon poncho. I like that a lot as well. I have a Patagonia Nano Air jacket. Now, this is nowhere near as heavy-duty as an in insulative as what many people are starting with, but I'll focus in a moment on some of the cold-weather gear that I have as well. Patagonia Half Zip. Uh, love that guy. Super lightweight, uh, insulates well. It's great mid-layer. And uh, some REI hiking pants. Wow, love these as well. Three standard shirts I'm taking. One for sleeping, two for hiking. Um, two Adidas, one Patagonia. Um, since it's been so warm on the trail, I pa I'm packing a short sleeve Nike shirt as well. Three pairs of ex officio shorts, um, one, or I should say boxers, uh, one of them for sleeping. And then um, a pair of um, running shorts with the liner cut out. Three pairs of, um, what do you call them, the, uh, <laughs> the, the uh, hiking socks from Vermont which um, name currently escapes me, but uh, you know what they are. They're, they last forever, and uh, I've used them for a while, really like them. Njinji liners, um, nylon hat. I've always hiked with a cotton hat, but I wanted to give a go with a nylon hat since I'll be out there so long and gets all sweaty and st stinky. This is from Trailheads. Got this on Amazon. Uh, one of the things that I don't see a lot of people using is... A waterproof socks. This is from Shower Pass, and uh, really like these. This uh, has proven to be very helpful on rainy days when I'm hiking. And uh, so I would use the socks, but still with the liners, and that's proven to be a good combination. They're not perfect. You still feel a little bit of moisture, but uh, it's much better than just having your feet slosh around in water, which where I think can also lead to more blisters and just general morale busters. Always hike with uh, year-round with glove liners, especially in New Hampshire. I've seen snow even in the middle of summer up there, and in a buff, of course. So 
So let me switch to the cold weather gear that I expect I'll have uh, on the trail for the first perhaps six weeks. Again, I'm starting February 25th. Standard hat, um, a balaclava, this is just a cheapo, five bucks from Amazon. A pair of long underwear that I'll sleep in at night. Another pair of gloves, fairly thin. Love these guys right here. These are Enlightened Equipment booties. They're synthetic insulation. Both of them together only weigh three ounces. Um, I've slept with those in, in 10 degree weather and really found them comfortable. Um, have mittens. These are waterproof uh, vinyl, really cheap, $10 mittens from Amazon. But that's for me, I hate getting cold hands and covering up, especially when there's precipitation, that, that makes a big difference. Have rain wind pants. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with my uh, these pants. I don't think there's really any good rain pants, but um, what I use these mostly for uh, is when it's really cold and windy, blocking the wind. And um, if you wear them on a rainy day, they're going to wet out, you're going to be soaked. And for those reasons, unless it's really cold, I prefer a kilt. And um, I should, flipping around here, here's... Um, my uh, traction. Um, I'm an experienced winter hiker. I have crampons. I have micro spikes. These are the, and I love the Catula brand, by the way, but these are their so-called nano spikes. And these were designed for walkers and runners. I've been using these for the last year, and they've worked out really well. They're much lighter than micro spikes. The rubber's more pliable, easier to get on. And um, what I'd mention as well is because they're on the minimalist side, you have a better feel for the the terrain underneath you, which I think can improve the chances you won't fall over when you hit, hit ice or snow. Uh, be, as I mentioned before, I'm starting with a, um, a Nano Puff, Patagonia Nano Puff jacket, which is a little lightweight once you start getting down into the freezing temperatures. So for just for the month, first uh, month or so, I'll bring along a... Uh, Patagonia down vest um, that uh, had probably for 10 years. It's a little beaten and worn, but it's uh, proven very helpful. That's my basic clothing. So let me pick up here, come around my little office. There's my babies again. <laughs> and uh, and get to my um, food. There's the dog's water bowl. I'm not bringing that. Uh, just I have a you know traditional stove tight small titanium pot and my bi uh, bear bag um, I have pack for about four and a half to five days It's about eight pounds. I normally try and focus on having about two pounds of food per day and uh, That's worked out well for me um, standard toiletries shovel a um, little tool kit of soap and repair tape and cleaning stuff. A um, couple of these plastic bags, this is pretty useful. You can find these on Amazon and elsewhere that are odor removing bags. So if you have dirty clothes or wrappers and old, you know, things that you would normally throw in the trash, but you can't when you're out hiking, you don't want it to smell too much and attract animals. These plastic bags are quite good. Of course, I have the AT guide, invaluable. My roller, which uh, I love, six ounces, is worth it. Um, kind of a toiletries bag with um, toothbrush, pills, a, um, a shortened towel, which I've got it down to about three ounces. Sawyer mini uh, water filter. I have used, like many have talked about, the micro one. Didn't like that at all. Um, in addition to uh, two one liter smart water bottles, I'm bringing, uh, I think some people call it Knock Outdoors, but it's C-N-O-C. This is my dirty water uh, bag, C-Knock or Knock Outdoors. This has worked really well for that purpose, for dirty water. In those circumstances where I need to carry extra water, I have a ever new uh, water bladder, if you will. Um, this, most of the time I will not fill this, but if I have to go long distances where water is uncertain, I definitely will fill it up. I am prone to dehydration. I only have one kidney, which is another story. But uh, as a result of that, um, I have to be very um, careful about uh, water availability. 
terms of electronics, I have a smaller um, anchor battery charger than most. This is the 13,000 milliamp. But uh, frankly, I don't want to carry, I'm not carrying satellite phone or anything like that. And um, I just don't want to carry the extra weight. People are seemingly carrying very heavy batteries. I don't want to be one of them. And a black diamond uh, uh, light, a wall charger, some spare batteries, and uh, frankly, that's about it. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it on my, my intro and gear review of... Uh, Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to have a developing skill set with uh, this YouTube vlogging. Hopefully it'll work out. I appreciate anyone who would subscribe or, or offer comments on my gear list. And I frankly hope to see a bunch of you out in the trail. Take care.